With the month of June right around the corner, it means another month of new PlayStation 4 game releases, and I want to go over 13 new games that are coming out in June. We've got quite a few games, some heavy hitters, some other titles that are going a little bit under the radar, so without further ado, let's get right into it, and let's start off with arguably the most controversial game of this generation, The Last of Us Part 2. I thought Metal Gear Solid 5 had that title down pat, however... Last of Us Part 2 is giving it a real run for its money, and it'll finally be out next month. Now, this is a game that if you read the leaks, your anticipation for it might have dropped considerably. However, I do want to say it is still Naughty Dog. Maybe they can pull out something good, and I know a lot of you guys are still excited for it. Look, my anticipation for the game has quickly diminished after, you know, the leaks came out. I don't want to go into what the leaks are since some of you guys are trying to stay spoiler-free. Still, if you look at the game from a visual standpoint, that state of play event that they did and the gameplay they showcased, it looks really, really good. And I still want to give it the benefit of the doubt at this point because I feel like at least Naughty Dog has earned that. Let's see how the reviews turn out. Let's see what exactly the specifics are because without context, it is a little bit difficult to deduce what it largely means to the overall scale of the game. But the the Last of Us Part 2 will be out June 19th. Again, my anticipation has dropped quickly, but I am sure a lot of you guys are still incredibly excited for the game. And hey, more power to you if you're in that boat for me, Ghost of Tsushima is the game I'm more excited for. Nevertheless, again, it's out June 19th. All right, moving on from that, The Elder Scrolls Online is seeing its next major expansion in Greymoor. Join over 15 million players in the award-winning online RPG. Explore the frozen tundra and snowy mountains of Western Skyrim and stop a powerful vampire lord from enslaving Tamriel and the, and the Elder Scrolls Online Greymoor, a part of the year-long gothic adventure of Dark Heart of Skyrim. Now, it should be noted that this already came out on PC and it saw a mixed reception. However, Elder Scrolls Online as a whole has become a far better game than what it was in the past. Greymoor is something that I think a lot of people are going to inherently be excited for because you do get to explore Skyrim. At this point, it does look like the zone is relatively small, but it is $40, and if you've been in the Elder Scrolls Online experience for a long time, you're probably invested enough where you're going to buy it anyway. And again, you'll venture through an iconic land a thousand years before the events of Skyrim. Explore the un unforgiving homeland of the Nords, both above and below grounds. Defeat the darkness, protect the world of the living from an army of vampires, werewolves, and witches is a year-long gothic saga. ESO once again delivers a new story that builds with each quarterly release. So again, that'll be $40. There are some other editions available, and it'll be out on June 9th. All right, next up, here's a JRPG. I'm very excited to make the transition to the PlayStation 4. Yee's Memories of Celseta. World-famous red-haired adventurer Adol Christian wakes it, awakens in the unfamiliar land of Celseta, remembering nothing more than his name. Join Adol and his new friends as he embarks on an adventure to map the wilderness and reclaim his memories in a beloved action RPG. Now, this originally released on the PlayStation Vita, and I played it on there. Really enjoyed it, and if you have played Yeez in the past, you know what to expect, and I shouldn't be calling it Yeez. I've been calling it Yeez for a long time, but it is, in fact, Yeez. Nevertheless, these games are fantastic action RPGs, and they have great gameplay. The visuals aren't anything to write home about, especially considering the fact that this was initially a Vita game. However, I don't think visuals are at the top of the priority list for a Yeez fan. If you want a great JRPG, you're gonna find it here. Stories usually are pretty good this one is pretty good as well. Uh, the music is excellent, but the gameplay is some of the best that you're going to find in a JRPG. Fast-paced, action-oriented, and this one is due out on June 9th. All right, next up, here's a game that I've been talking to death, and I'm so excited for it to be finally released, and that is SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Now, THE Nordic has been putting out some of the zaniest games. I mean, their games have been really, really good, but their games are a little bit from left field and games that I wasn't entirely expecting. However, this one is an awesome one that they're bringing back. SpongeBob is back. Are you ready, kids? The cult classic is back. Faithfully remade in SpongeTastic Splendor. Play a SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy, and show the evil plankton that crime pays even less than Mr. Krabs. Game features no play as SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy, and use their unique set of skills. Thwart Plankton's evil plan to rule Bikini Bottom with his army of wacky robots. Meet countless characters from the beloved series. High-end visuals, modern resolutions, and carefully polished gameplay. Faithful remake of one of the best SpongeBob games ever. Brand new Horde mode multiplayer for up to two players online and offline and restored content that was cut from the original game like the Robo Squidward boss fight and more. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated will be out June 23rd, coming at a budget price point. I think this is a game a lot of you guys are going to end up really enjoying. Next up, 
we have a game from Game Freak of all people in Little Town Hero. This is a game that already released on the Switch and it was received pretty well over there. The story of the game is set in an isolated village on the edge of the world. The only gate leading outside is heavily guarded by a castle and the villagers are not allowed to leave. Unlike most RPGs, there is no need to fight weak monsters repeatedly to level grind in Little Town Hero. Instead, you'll need to have a good strategy to fight each boss monster one on one. Will the protagonist live the adventure he craves and escape the humdrum village life? Little Town Hero is due out on June 2nd. Next up, we have Beyond Blue, which was a game that was released on Apple Arcade, but now it's making the transition to all other major platforms. Beyond Blue is a single-player narrative adventure that takes you deep into our planets, beating Blue Heart, explore the awesome wonder and unbounded mystery that exists within the world's ocean. Throughout eight different dives, you'll explore the untouched world of our ocean and use technology at the edge of our understanding, tracking sea creatures, unraveling mysteries, and interacting with the ocean like never before, experiencing an evocative narrative with a full voice cast, listen to a captivating and entertaining soundtrack featuring an original score and music from Miles Davis, The Flaming Lips, The Edisons, and more, and unlock 16 unique mini documentaries called Ocean Insights that feature original footage and interviews with science's leading ocean experts. Beyond Blue is due out on June 11th, so definitely give that a look if you want a more chill and evocative experience. Moving on from that, for those of you that are looking for cool mech games, Warborn is definitely one to have on your radar. Deploy for battle in the variable armor, a technolog uh, technologically advanced suit of war, with turn-based tactics and quick-fire clashes, lead a strike force of deadly mecha to bring peace to the solar system in a 40-mission campaign, so a relatively lengthy campaign by the looks of it. Create your own maps, practice in skirmish or battle across multiplayer, so quite a bit of depth to the game as well from the campaign, creation tools, and online multiplayer. A lot of options in this game, and it does have pretty interesting gameplay as well. You've got campaign, skirmish, and multiplayer map editor, so a lot of depth to this one, and it is due out on June 12th. Next up, we have Desperados 3. Desperados is back with Desperados 3, a story-driven hardcore tactical stealth game set in a ruthless Wild West scenario. Play smart if you want to succeed. A good plan can make the difference between survival and finding yourself at the business end of a pistol. Another game coming from THQ Nordic, so they're bringing Desperados back. Drifter, gunslinger, and natural leader Cooper can kill quietly with a knife or take out multiple foes with his revolvers. Strongman Hector carries a giant bear trap and can slay the toughest opponents with his trusty axe. Cold-blooded bounty hunter McCoy likes to be methodical, using lures, knockout gas, poison uh, syringes, and a custom long-range pistol, and Kate can fool almost any man with the right outfit and kills discreetly with her hidden gun. And then there is the mysterious woman from New Orleans, Isabel. All of the characters are unique, each with a very particular set of skills and experience the freedom of choice with countless different ways to overcome any obstacle. If you're into tactics-based games, this is definitely one to have on your radar, and it's due out June 16th, so definitely keep your eyes on that. Next up, we have a brand new multi player first person shooter disintegration a sci-fi fps combined with rts elements followed a heavy weaponized grab cycle while commanding your troops on the ground as you battle through a thrilling single player campaign and in frantic pvp from v1 interactive the new 30 person independent development studio founded by marcus letho the co-creator of halo comes disintegration a sci-fi fps combining fps and real-time strategy elements set in the near future on earth the only hope for human survival is through integration a process developed to preserve human brain and robotic armatures. You play as Romer Shaw, a former Grave Cycle pilot in, a com in command of a small resistance force still grasping onto the fading memories of their human selves. With the domineering Rayon forces set on eliminating the final remnants of human society, it's up to Romer and his crews of outlaws to fight back and reboot humanity. You've got tactical based combat with the Grave Cycle's riveting single player campaign, fretting multiplayer online action battle across a variety of maps, and three intense team based 5v5 multiplayer modes. Choose your favorite Grave Cycle and lead your crew alongside your teammates competing against opposing pilots to win objective based matches. The game will be out on June 16th. A pretty interesting FPS, all things known. Next up, we have the Blaster Master 1 and 2 collection. So yes, Blaster Master is making its way to the PlayStation 4, and these are pretty good games. If you want a side-scrolling top-down hybrid action adventure title, this one will definitely give you that. Relatively challenging as well, but these games are action-based with old-school retro graphics. Don't expect anything too modern looking out of this one, but for old-school platform action fans, this is definitely going to be one to keep your eyes on, and Blaster Master has been received really well on PC, 92% positive. 
Steam reception with 105 reviews for Blaster Master 2, so that'll definitely be a pretty good one to check out. Next up, we have Hunting Simulator 2. With your hunting dog by your side, explore the Texan desert and forests of Colorado and Europe as you track down 33 animal species. Choose your gear from over 160 official weapons, accessories, and clothing items, including Browning, Winchester, and Bushnell. Hunting Simulator 1, obviously these simulator games are of a certain style, but it was pretty good, and Hunting Simulator 2 is going to build upon that. That will be dropping sometime in June, although we don't have an official release date at this point. And lastly, we have No Straight Roads. This is a game that I am incredibly excited for. Music rhythm titles have really taken over as one of my favorite genres in all of gaming after playing games like Beat Saber. But... Take Back Vinyl City with Rock and Barca, a music-based action adventure as indie rock band members Mayday and Zook and lead a musical revolution against EDM Empire No Straight Roads. After being unfairly rejected in their audition to join No Straight Roads, Mayday and Zook uncover the evil intentions behind the NSR Empire. It's now down to them to save their city from corruption, enjoy fast and friendly combat with a musical twist as these two aspiring rock artists fight back with the power of music. A lot of features in this game, a unique music-based action adventure title that puts music and sound at the part of gameplay it will be out next month that's going to conclude this video again a lot of depth in the game releases next month i think all eyes are going to be on the last of us part 2 for better or worse i think people are just curious to see how that game ultimately turns out but with releases like Yee's memories of cell uh, spongebob squarepants battle for bikini bottom rehydrated elder scrolls online great more there's definitely a lot of titles to be excited for next month that's going to conclude this video sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.